My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 7,856 kilometres so far and I've got 8,744 left to go. So far on the mission, I've survived alone in the desert, pissed blood, been robbed at gunpoint, thought I was going to be killed in the jungle, had my support van smashed to bits and we've raised 82,000 quid for charity. In this episode, our new team member James arrives, I give Gus a fresh new trim and we put the entire mission in jeopardy as we risk losing the van overboard in pirate infested waters. Girls and boys, we're 42k in, 39 degrees. If you're ever wondering what I do, basically this is it, right? For hours on end, sitting this. Yeah, bit off. How many k's left? 18. Might have a little sip of water in a minute. Bit off. 17. Let's keep going. 17.85. Okay. Yeah, only a couple more hours. Yeah. I cracked on with the last 17k of the day. Master of the heat, smasher of the tarmac. Back at the port in Cameroon, Stan and Jamie were waiting for the world's sketchiest crane to lift Nelly onto a boat that would ship them to Nigeria. Surprise, surprise, it was not going to plan. Where's the crane, Stan? We're not using a crane anymore. They're building a new deck on the boat. So we're going to drive the van over some planks onto the deck. Yeah, as long as it's securely done, I think it's probably safer than craning it. I guess we just have to put the solar panels back on now. Yeah, the only thing we got done yesterday we're now undoing. Yes. The whole situation was a disorganised mess. Already we were off to a bad start, with the boat moored in a position where we'd have to drive onto the planks. Compared to the cranes, the new deck seemed to be the lesser evil, but it was yet to be seen. The boys got to work on the solar panels and waited for the crew to haphazardly nail about 12 planks of wood onto the boat. 60k down, I finished my run, inhaled some snacks and got ready to pick up our new team member James, who will be joining us for the next two months to help us keep things afloat. Day 190, done and dusted. Absolute stinger of a day. Got 60Ks in and now we're gonna go pick up James, right? Yes, we are. How do you feel about that? Good, man. James is a good runner as well as being able to edit and shoot. He should fit in well. Would you say running is the most important quality for an editor in your opinion? Nah, <laughs> but what running is good for, discipline, work ethic. If he's anything like Stan, he'll have to be staying up late and getting them videos, mate. Good evening, sir. How is it? English. Yes, English. Where are you going? Tacum? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh. Sweet, let's go on the road then. Back at the port, the moment we'd all been waiting for had arrived. After 10 days of waiting in an active war zone, numerous changes of plans, four different cranes, and the boys slowly losing their minds, it was time to load Nelly onto the boat and sail through rough, pirate infested waters. Sounds simple, right? That was an ordeal, wasn't it? We started off at a bit of a disadvantage already because they'd put a boat in the wrong place and they'd left loads of debris in the way. They won't go on the plank. They're not straight. Coming back won't help. The pipe thing, the back wheels don't get on the plank. Don't bring it to you. You don't go in like driving like that. Let's try it. You've got two straight planks and Fran has to turn onto the two straight planks. Over a curb. Yeah, oh yeah, shit, there's a curb as well. Yeah. When we first tried to even mount the curb, the wheels skidded out. Come on. We were at even more of a shit angle than we were before. You me. I'm confident. You are not confident in yourself. I'm confident in myself, but not confident in that. I have to listen to all. If you are going now like this, if you are going, you have to keep it like that. We're all trying to solve the same problem, man. Okay. I mean, obviously, everyone's just screaming "go, go, go" all the time. But at the front left, if that wheel's okay, they just assume all the others are too. Go, go. Stand up. Go. Wait a minute. Go, go. How? Have you seen this? Where are we headed from? The fucking plank here shot out. If On the left not, as well? Yes. What? We were fucking lucky that we didn't crash. Well, they just added the planks again. I think they hammered a couple of nails into them. They hammered a couple of nails in. We got out and checked, and we were basically like, the back wheels are going to fall off the plank. Go, 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 go,
<laughs> what happens? The back wheels fell off the plane. <laughs> <laughs> the front wheels are on the boat, the back wheels are still on the floor. The only planks available to us are stuck basically under the front wheels of the van with no way to move them without picking the van up. And in fairness, they picked the van up. <laughs> I could not believe it. That's a four ton van, too. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of respect for that. They just walked over and picked the back of the van up. And then came the moment of truth. Move! 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 Right, man. You see what Africa can do? I do. <laughs> they woke up to chaos. The boat was already at sea and the van was swaying back and forth like me after my 10th tequila shot. The view out the windscreen lurched between the distant ocean and the very close ocean. One down, one down. They were snapped out of their trance by slightly panicked looking crew who told them that it was too dangerous to stay in the van. Whoa. I wish I was faking this movement. This is just the movement of the boat. I was watching this beam and every time we went over a wave, it was flexing. Yeah. The seas were already rough and a storm was coming in. But it was out of their hands and they were slowly beginning to accept that they were gonna lose Nelly and possibly more. If worse came to worse for the boys, they'd end up at the bottom of the ocean. Luckily, I prepared a backup. Hello boys and girls. I've been here as a video editor to help stand in the boys. Just give us your stats. James, 5 8, video editor from- 5 and 8, you know. <laughs> see, you're 5'11", I'm like six foot, and then Gus is like six five. Here we go. So yeah, basically, me and Gus had a long drive last night to pick James up, and then we've had a long drive this morning back to the start line. This joint, it's start to proceedings today. I've been in the back, getting tossed around. <laughs> How far are we planning today? Was it quarter to two, yeah? It's looking tough. I reckon 30k is doable. Okay. And here we go. I hit the road, breathing in the smell of fresh tarmac and anxiously waiting for an update from the open sea. The thunderstorm that had genuinely made the boys question their chances of survival had finally calmed and the sea had opened up in relatively flat water, but the journey was far from over. Where are we? Nigeria. We're here. Still on the boat. We've just uh, gone past police boats and customs boats who check everything. Fucking Gizu nearly got his top off and had a bare knuckle box. Police officer hit him with a big stick. Yeah, that was mad. That was mad. The issue was that they still had our documents. So. Yeah, at this point they still had our Kanye passports and I was like, can't we all just calm down? You can get... fight after we get Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> but yeah, beautiful. Energised by the boys and Nelly still being alive for now, I pushed out the last Ks of the day and also puked my guts up. Mate, perfect timing because I just fell off. You just threw up? That is imminently coming out. <laughs> imminent, bruv. We went to bed, but the night was far from over for the boat boys. After a 12 hour journey in which they almost lost the van in the ocean, battled seasickness and feared for their lives, they had reached the port in Nigeria and prepared to unload Nelly. Okay. Am I straight? John, look at the back tires. Turn how far? Small. Small. Jamie, you personally shot stuff. It's getting worse, okay? Definitely not. Right now, the van's keeping the planks connected to the boat. They need to pull the boat in. Go, go, go. After what could only be described as the most stressful ordeal of their lives, the boys f***ing made it. I've heard you speak a little bit about rest day. Do you find when you have a rest day, it kind of sets you back in terms of you get the soreness as time to set in? Well, I can't really have rest days, but like, rest day would be helpful. It's just not helpful when it's like a rest week. Like when we've had logistical problems and we've stopped somewhere for a week, then it becomes a problem. 
All good. Ready? What's just been happening, Gus? Army guys just rocked up with like a few full automatic weapons and a grenade launcher, telling us it's probably not a safe area to camp at. So on that note. Realising it might be wise to respect the words of a man with a grenade launcher, the lads rushed out of there in search of a safer place to park up. The heat of the day was getting to me and the first stop couldn't come soon enough. How do you rate it? Yeah, it's decent, mate. I'm a big fan of like the portion. Like, give me a litre of juice. I don't want the fucking 250 mil. Fucking you know, hell, mate. Jesus. <laughs> and this is why I only try to virus children packs. <laughs> Teddy here. I wanted to say how much we're rooting for you back home. The whole country is keep pushing, inspiring, and proving to everyone how fucking hard you are. Not that there is any doubt left. Missing you guys and can't wait to get back out there with you all soon. P.S. Jared's a pussy. Never believed I could run a marathon. JK, love you. Teddy. Teddy's a fucking geezer. I like Teddy. Shout out. Perfect Ted. Oh, that's fire, actually. Yeah, it's not bad, eh? That's actually unreal. What's your favourite? That raspberry? Yeah, the raspberry one's decent. It's 100% natural. So it's got no added bullshit in there. Sparkling water, apple juice and concentrate, raspberry juice, organic ceremonial grade matcha, green tea extra. You can buy a Hardest Geezer meal deal from a Tesco. So it's got a perfect head, a hoist and a duck wrap, and a Kit Kat chunky. If you take a photo of that and post it on social media and tag me and Perfect Ted in it, then you're in with a chance to get flown out to Africa and uh, come and run for a bit with me. Is it really? Yeah. I'm basically a pro barber. Okay, we'll get this neck taken care of first. Barber work done. Yeah, pretty good. I don't see any flaws. Oh yeah. F***ing oven. Give him a little kid. With Stan and Jamie arriving soon, Gus and I knew our time together was coming to an end. We decided to share one last moment, just the two of us. Okay, is there some biscuits in there? Feel like that. Uh, you sure? Hey! F***ing sweet. The diet professional athletes. I eat biscuits and I drink milk. That's about it, man. Never ceases to amaze me how many people they cram with one car. F***ing incredible. But when we think of how much space is in the car, we think of seats. In Nigeria, they think outside the box, they go, that bonnet, kind of like a seat. That roof, I could fit at least seven people on it. That's innovation. We should bring some of that home. That's a lovely angle down here, mate. <laughs> how tight do the legs go? Can you touch your toes? Can I? <laughs> Can I? I haven't been able to touch my toes in a long time, mate. James, what will be your plan of action, right? So, say we're just sat here on the side of the road. A group of geezers roll up in a car. One of them has, like, cheeky little nine mil. And he says, like, give me your shit. What are you doing? What's the game plan? I'd look him dead in the eyes and go, like, trying to tell a bad man there's no entry. <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang, bang to the whole place empty, you know what I mean? <laughs> nah, what I'd honestly do, mate, I'd shit myself. Put my hands up and go, please, take it and don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> Try to direct them to the box. With like, you know, John Wick over here. Yeah. <laughs> with a lot of like foreign cash, maybe they won't notice. They just like point here and they think like, ah, oh, that's a lot of cash. Then it's like here, an old broken iPhone. So we point them in that direction. We try to have like less valuables around here, not too much phones. You carry like everything together, right? Yeah, yeah. Very stupid, of course. Anyhow, you can definitely try to get some volleyball, like try to run, but take your important stuff out. Give them the cash. They are not interested anyway in your cards and your passport. Keep calm. Worst case, they shoot you. Calmed by these words of wisdom and the appropriate weather accompanying them, I got on the ones and twos. We all knew we were going to be in for a long and uncomfortable night, some of us more than others. So Russ Cook, how are you feeling this morning? <laughs> yeah, I'm alright mate. How are you? Shit. Yeah. Tired. What woke me up the most was like actually me bumping into you and then I would feel you moving and I would be like, ah oh, I'm waking up hard as geezer. <laughs> oh man, I don't think I woke up at all during the night. So you don't mind the cuddle? Yeah, the cuddle. What do you like so far most about Nigeria? I really like that they speak English in Nigeria because it means that I can actually communicate to people. When I get back, I have to learn some languages because traveling and only speaking English is like quite a limited experience, especially if you're in countries that don't speak any English. 
People have been really friendly, way more friendly than I thought because we've told a lot of sh** about Nigeria that was like quite hostile. I mean, and some of the views in Nigeria have been, I think, the best admission actually. Like, it's a beautiful country. I'm bringing out my boxes, Gus. Yeah? Because Russ Cook is not able to shower naked in the middle of the bush. <laughs> Sounded like an insult, that. <laughs> See you in a bit, mate. <laughs> I got stomping with an extra spring in my step. I couldn't explain it. It was a tingle that came from deep within me. A power like no other. And then I realised, for the first time in two weeks, I was sharing the Nigerian tarmac network with the magnificent beast, the ferocious and undefeated Nelly. Update for the Gieslings. What's up, Gieslings? We're currently in Nigeria, on our way back to Rubs and Gus. And now, James as well. It's taken us about 10 hours or so to go 250k so far. Only 250k left of them. But we'll be with them soon, and then the band will be back together again. And you guys get lovely, proper quality video. If all went to plan, the boys will be back with us the next day. Their imminent arrival had me thinking about the chaos of the last few weeks brought on solely by one closed border and the struggle and adventure this incredible continent brought with it. It's really hard to control the environment here. When you're in a country like America, or if, if we were doing this in Europe, even though there's loads of different countries, it's just like way more easy to control the environment because there's less variables, there's less bullshit going around that can f you over. Optimizing your efficiency in running or optimizing the content creating? If I was talking purely selfishly, I'd rather optimize for performance. I think I probably care more about performance than making good content, but it's definitely a balance. Like, none of this sh happens without good content and content is also like the thing that will maybe like inspire other people to run more or exercise more or like go and see more of the world so like they're definitely both important it's that part of the day when it gets absolutely see you in a bit see you in a bit mate as i hit the road gus and james packed up and drove to a close by market to try some local food Deep fried jams with some spicy oily sauce. It's like mashed up pepper with a lot of uh, palm oil. Jared and I tried to make jam fries a while back. They didn't work out too well for us. We made them a bit too small. And in Nigeria, they know how to do it. Keep them big to pieces. What are usually in Nigeria comes in plastic bags. Rip a hole with it in your teeth. Now just watch out that the water doesn't go all over. Before we eat, of course, we wash our hands. Again. Um, first bite. I want to know how spicy it is as well. Yeah, pretty nice. That sauce is honestly so good. I would buy that. I'd buy a bottle of that for sure. I mean, it's like tomato based, isn't it? Could be. That's really good, man. With another 60k in the bag, I jumped in the 4x4 ready for some solid scrounging and a gust free eight hours of sleep. So Ross, did you enjoy the running? Oh, I love running, mate. Love it so much. Wake up every day, think, can't wait to go for a run. I get that. <laughs> Do you want to search a camping spot or two k's ahead, there's cheap hotels? Oh, f*** it. Don't even go to a hotel if you want. Three of us and these people squeeze. For me, like the camping thing at the moment is not the issue, it's more like safety. But we're not worried to risk our lives and equipment. I agree, mate. I already have some bread and honey ready if you want. Mate, this honey was a decent purchase. And there the honey goes. Oh, f***. I wasn't looking at what I was doing. I didn't get as much rest as I needed, but it didn't matter. Today was the day of Nelly's return and nothing could stop me. Hopefully another eight hours of sleep in a bag. Nah, mate, it took me a while to, to get to sleep last night. I was sleeping probably like two weeks. Really? First proper night in two weeks probably. Right, well, we best get back on the road because we're on a tight schedule, so we're going to drop you off to Absolutely. the start Perfect. point. You should see um, Stan and James there as well. What time are they due? I assume like end of the afternoon, beginning evening. Right, wicked. Oh. Yeah. All right. Having the boys and Nelly back with us meant that the first time on this mission we could work with a maximum efficiency that two vehicles bring. We could split up when necessary and allow our absolute content machine to evolve into a godlike being. Fair to say, I was eager to put into place the plan that would hopefully help me get over that finish line faster. Strawberry daiquiris were cooling. <laughs> Oh, it'd be good to have the boys and the van back today. We'll be like back up to full 
full capacity then, isn't it? We've never really had full capacity because the last time the 4x4 got here, Gus, how many days was it? The 4x4 was here and then it was like three days later we split up, wasn't it? Something like that, yeah. Like, really quick. So this will be the first time we actually have both vehicles and like a full crew, pretty much. I must admit, I'm much anticipating the scent of Nelly. If she, if she Mate, smells anywhere bad. near as pungent as she looks. Not too bad. She is a banged up girl these days. Is she? I always saw on Instagram as well, the hardest geezer memes. Is that run by any of you lads? Uh, no, nah, he's back home. Runs up. I'm sure he's got like 3,000, 4,600 followers this that page has got now. For anyone watching the YouTube, anyone a bit of uh, hardest geezer memes? Hardest geezer memes. Look at me looking so fresh in that profile picture. <laughs> How was that so far today? You seem like you're in a bit of good spirits. Yeah, mate. It wasn't um, 8 million degrees outside this morning, so that was nice. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, a lot of the more checkpoint guards are being like, why are you by yourself? Have you not got security? All this kind of stuff. Which is interesting. I'm trying to, like, not make any assumptions, and everyone's been really nice so far. And I'm just hoping I'm not getting lured into, like, a full sense of security. The moment had finally arrived. The boys were back in town and so was Nelly, just 100k from us and closing. I couldn't believe she had survived. She'd driven 1,000k's across Cameroon, passed through an active war zone, been loaded onto a boat with four planks, survived the high seas, pirates, police, another 1,000k drive across the worst road she'd ever seen. Nothing could stop our blue beast. All the boys needed to do was get some diesel to finish the trip and reunite with us. Oh, what's that, Stan? They put petrol in instead. She